Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, good night, whatever part of the world you're in. It's Stephen the Australian in Holland again, and believe it or not, I am finally after four and a half months back to being a dog trainer, um, which <laughs> I've missed. There's, I might live with five dogs here, and three of them are Kelpies, but, and I've got my poodle, obviously, that I'm going to be using for training, and I've actually used her for training for the first time. Uh, because I got a phone call the other day, an inquiry saying, I believe you're a dog trainer. And of course I said, well, yes, I, I am. Uh, I'm not at the moment, but I am. How can I help you? And this lady, Danielle, very, very nice lady I've obviously since met. Um, her dog lady, a lovely golden doodle, is actually what they call it over here. It's a golden retriever cross a poodle, obviously, hence the name golden doodle. Australian people, please stop laughing. Um, so she rang me about a golden doodle lady and lady had a unique problem. Um, it's actually not an uncommon, uncommon problem in dogs. Hot air balloons. Lady is 19 months old and she saw a hot air balloon for the first time about a week and a half ago. And her owner Danielle, the lady who called me, uh, explained what explain what had happened lady freaked out and literally would not go outside wouldn't go out to the toilet stopped stopped in the kitchen in their kitchen where their window was where it looks out into the sky where she saw the hot air balloon um, and it's point blank refused she's had another dog trainer around there um, and she called me and I went oh okay I'll, I'll, I'll come around and see if I can help that's not a problem, I'm not actually training dogs yet, but I'd, I'd love a chance to see if I can help. Actually seems like a fairly logical conclusion. Get the dog confident, uh, take her out, find out where the hot air balloons come from, and take her to the hot air balloons. So that's what we did. Anyway, so I drove around to, made an appointment with Danny Allen. I took Poodle with me, Truffle. Um, I thought she might be a good confident build, confidence builder with Lady and went made an appointment and I went round there and again, first appointment in Europe. Okay, how's this gonna go? It'll all be good, it's a dog. So I went in, went in and met, met Danielle, met Lady and Lady was very, very happy. Like she was very excited to have a new person in the house like, like lots of dogs are. Um, no signs of being nervous whatsoever. And Danielle stopped halfway through the house and had a chat and I spent five or ten minutes playing with Lady and giving her a rub and checking her teeth and putting my hands in her mouth and um, I knuckle up her bum. It sounds really strange but it's actually called a temperament test to see how a dog's going to react because if you stuck your hand in my mouth um, and you knuckle up my bum, I'd probably bite as I explain to all my clients what I'm doing when I'm doing it. Um, and no, she was fine. She was a very happy dog so obviously the problem was their back window is a very large window that looks out into the open sky with beautiful light. Um, and that's where last week this hot air balloon came up and freaked Lady out to the point she won't go out the backyard. So that was the goal, was to get her in the backyard. And she's very confident with me. I spent maybe 10 minutes sitting down and kneeling down, playing with her and enticing her. Uh, and no, not with food because I don't use food in dog training. That's not dog training, that's bribery. <laughs> Sorry all you dog trainers out there, but if you're using food, you're cheating. <laughs> that's just my opinion. And I'm open to comments on that from anybody. Um, and I, I got her near the back door. Um, and again, a lot of trainers would try and pull the dog out and put it on a lead and take it outside and then comfort it. No, she, she wasn't having a bar of it and I said, uh, no, okay, so that's when Poodle came in. Truffle, I said, okay, Danielle, let me go and grab Truffle and we'll, we'll see if we can get her to, her, her to get her out because she'll be a good distraction. Dogs are primary minded. They use 90% of their brain on one thing at a time. So basically they're like little kids in front of a TV. They concentrate on that. And when mum's going, dinner's ready, dinner's ready, dinner's ready, dinner's ready, and it seems like the children aren't hearing, um, they're actually really not hearing. And dogs, it, it takes mum to go, hey, dinner! Kid, oh, okay, dinner's ready. Yep, yeah. and then they, yeah. That's how dogs' brains work as well. 
So I brought Truffle in. Again, ladies are really, really happy to have somebody else in the house. Very excited. Somebody new to play with. You, hey, let's go. Whoa, what's going on? So straight away I went, Poodle, I've only been here four and a half months, um, but Poodle Truffle is a fantastic dog and she was the right job dog for this job. Uh, I said, Poodle, outside, come on. And I walked outside, Poodle followed me, Lady followed Poodle. Well, we've got Lady outside, first problem solved. Then, after about five minutes, being primary minded, Lady actually looked up at the sky and realised she was outside. And that's when she became a bit nervous. And that's, again, where Truffle came in. That's Truffle's job, to play with her, to take her mind off it, to get her attention. And that's exactly what Truffle did. They played in the backyard, and then we actually took them for a walk, and we took them to a place um, it's not like Australia, in Holland. Um, it's nowhere near as big, but I'll tell you what, there's a lot more nature and a lot more parks and a lot more forests. One of the reasons I love this place, um, to take your dogs, take your kids, whatever. And we literally walked around, we walked out of, out of Danielle's house, down a track about 50 metres away, around the house, and then we were on this green bank of a river and okay, Truffle, do your thing, let's dance, darling. And did those dogs dance? They went crazy on the riverbank. So, okay, we've got a dog outside who's now confident, who's now happy lady. Fantastic. So obviously the next thing to do was to find the balloons. And again, I'm in Holland. Uh, fortunately, one of the few contacts I have actually owned a hot air balloon company from Anne's family. Um, but we didn't use that, we went the logical course and we went straight to the company that's in the next city, Tilburg, uh, Sky Balloons. And Danielle was being a fantastic person and a fantastic client, um, actually made the contact for me because it was easy to speak in Dutch because I can't speak Dutch. Um, I only speak Australian. I don't even speak English. Um, so we organized and rang them up and got their permission to actually go and take the dog. Uh, we got the permission to film this video from the company, which in Holland, you actually do need to do that. Um, so thank you very much, Sky Balloons. You are fantastic, and I'm pretty sure I'll be back there with a fair few dogs around here, because as I said, it's a very common problem. Um, and then we got to the balloons. Obviously, the balloons. This is the problem. And the basket was there. So you do things, these things, one at a time. I took her, I took her up to sniff the basket. She went, she sniffed, she's like, oh my God, what's this? Again, there's no threat, it's not a, she's scared of something in the sky. Which from a dog's mind, if you think like a dog, not a human, that's really logical, because dogs don't look up very often. And when they do, do notice hot air balloons, even my dogs in Australia, um, Kitch and Cadge, they react to it. Hear my dogs barking in the backyard, look out, what's there? Just a general hint, dog owners, if your dog's barking, it's for a reason. A dog doesn't just bark, and that reason could be because they're bored, but if they're outside in the backyard, lying quietly, and they start barking, I guarantee you it's, it's for a reason. There's something or somebody there. Um, that's how dogs work, otherwise they wouldn't bark. Anyway, so we went, I took her, she sniffed around the box, she was most comfortable with that. Um, they had to move move the move the trailer in the meantime, so she saw that and heard the car start up, and that startled her a bit. Um, being a being a golden doodle, she's like a poodle; they are very noise affected. So I just had her, and all this is about giving her confidence and making her feel safe. And from that time on, while they laid the balloon out, while they put the fans on, which obviously made a lot of noise, um, I made sure I took her closer and closer as close as I could to the actual balloon that had been laid down, because that, to, to the dog late, it wasn't a threat. When they put the fans on that made noise, that blew the balloon up, that got her interest. But again, in 30 seconds, one minute, she was fine. Um, it's when they put the hot air in. And that obviously made a noise. 
um, the balloon actually going up itself. And I made sure I took, I checked with the staff and I took, I knew how close, exactly how close I could take her. And I literally, basically, we, as the hot air balloon up, I made sure from the staff exactly where and how close I could sit. So I knew that and we basically sat as the hot air went up and it was a process of we were there, I think in total about maybe 55 minutes and there were other people there. Um, lady got a lot of attention from the other people saying, can we have a pet, can we have a pet? Um, yep, not a problem, you can pet this dog, not a problem. And she loved it, she loved the attention to the point that my lovely, my lovely Mrs. Anne, who does nursing home visits, uh, Danielle's actually said, hey, if you need to take her for on, on a nursing home visit, because I mentioned, well, she'd be perfect for it. Uh, yeah, lady might get a new, lady might get a job out of this. Um, so, yeah, sorry, getting distracted there. Um, anyway, the balloon's gone up, and it was all about sitting there, and all I, all, this is brain surgery, people. Like, to be a dog trainer, you've got to think like a dog. But literally all I did in all that time was sit there and reassure the dog, reassure lady that everything's okay, this is not going to hurt you. And by the time it actually got up in the air, like the balloon got up in the air, all the people had got in, which is, oh my God, I'm never going in a hot balloon myself, I can tell you that right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, they were all in and it took off. She actually sat there and watched it and I pointed her, pointed her head towards it. She tried to look away, didn't try to run away. Um, back back a few times but yeah by the time it actually took off and was up in the air and we walked away she was fine and was only interested in getting more pats from the people that were left on the ground and this was really really good two things the best part to me that I saw was on the way home we actually saw the hot air balloon and we saw lady watching it in the car and she wasn't worried about it she just looked at it and went, oh, okay, I know what that is now. So this this is not an easy fix, um, but it's it's a very logical way to go about things. If your dog's got a problem, well, it's like life in general, like I try and teach the kids, you, you confront it and you deal with it head on. You can't hide from it. Uh, you have to deal with it. And then you'll find out that, hey, it's not really, really not so bad. Um, and lady, lady did that perfectly, but we're gonna go still. You don't just say, oh yeah, that's okay. Everything's all right. No, we're going back there. Um, Poodle and lady will be playing. And you, if you train a dog and you go to a dog trainer and you pay them, make sure it's, they, they're not just coming for one day or two days. You want a backup plan. There you go. Um, at the end, we've got a happy lady. We've got a happy, Poodle, because she gets to play. She's got a new mate. Um, and we've got a happy me. So, cheers, and I look forward to making more videos for you. See yous, or, well, the opposite of g'day. Catch ya.